In this video, you're going to learn how to work with the distributive property, and we're going to go through six examples together. So let's dive in. The first example here, you can see we have this 3 times this quantity x plus 2. Notice it's in parentheses, and the 3 and the parentheses, they're right next to each other, which means that it's a multiplication problem. Now, one way to look at this, this is kind of the long way to do it, and I'll show you the short way. The long way is to think of you've got this x plus 2, but you have three of them. So it's like x plus 2 plus another x plus 2 plus another x plus 2. So you have three of those groups. And now what you're going to do is you're going to combine like terms. Now remember, when you look to the left or just in front of the variable, if there's nothing there, that's understood to be a 1. So this is like 1x plus 1x plus 1x, which gives us 3x. 2 plus 2 plus 2, that's going to be 6. So we have 3x plus 6. That's our answer. Now, that's a long way to do it. The shortcut is whatever's in front here, next to the parentheses, you're going to distribute or multiply into the parentheses. So we have 3 times x, which is 3x. 3 times positive 2 is positive 6. Now, if it's a positive, we write plus. If it's a negative, we write minus. And that's your final result. So it's a kind of a nice, quick way of doing it. So Let's take a look at the next example. So here we have 2 times the quantity y minus 4. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to distribute or multiply into the parentheses like so. 2 times y is equal to 2y. Again, remember, if there's not a number to the left or in front of that variable, that's a 1. And you can think of this as 2 times 1, which is 2 times y, 2y. Now we have 2 times negative 4, whenever I see a minus, I just think of it as a negative number. In your mind, you want to capture the sign. You want to look to the left or in front, as they call it, and you want to capture. If it's minus, it's negative. If it's plus, it's positive. Think of that as a group. So 2 times negative 4 is negative 8, which we can write this as minus 8. So minus and negative basically go hand in hand, plus and positive go hand in hand. So this is your final result. Let's look at number 3 now. Here we have negative 5 times the quantity c minus 6. Now, again, the mistake that students sometimes make is that when they're distributing, they either forget to distribute or multiply to everything that's inside the parentheses. And remember, the terms are always separated by a plus or a minus sign. So a term is kind of like a group. You can see there's like two terms here or two groups. So we have to multiply negative 5 times both of them. Again, just like the last problem, you want to make sure that you capture the sign, whether it's positive or negative. So just look to the left. Now, if there's nothing to the left, that means it's positive. Okay, But if you see a plus sign, that's positive. If you see a minus sign, that's negative. So it's a good kind of habit to get in, into um, either circling or in your mind kind of capturing or, or realizing this, these go together. So negative 5 times 1c is negative 5c. And negative 5 times a negative 6 is a positive 30. Remember, a negative times a negative is a positive, And so we can just write that plus for positive. So that's the key. Let's try some more examples. If you want, you can pause the video and try some of these on your own. So for number 4 now, same thing. We have 2x times the quantity 3x plus 6. We know this is multiplication because these are right next to each other, side by side, with nothing in between. Again, we're going to capture, capture and distribute like that. So 2 times 3 is 6. x times x is x squared. Now remember the rules of exponents. When you multiply and the bases are the same, see x and x are the same base, you add the exponents. So if there's not an exponent, it's understood to be a 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. Okay, so that's how we're getting the 6x squared. And then same thing here. We're capturing that sign. That's a positive 6. 2x times 6 is 6 times 2 is 12, and the x comes along with it. So this is a positive 12x, or we could say plus 12x. And you got that one. Let's look at number 5. So number 5, we have 8 times the quantity 2 minus y. So we're going to take the 8, we're going to distribute into the parentheses. 8 times 2 is 16. This minus is really like a minus 1y, right? So negative 1y. We're going to capture this, treat this whole thing like a group. 8 times negative 1 is a negative 8, and the y comes along with it. So 8 times negative 1y is negative 8y, or you can write it just as minus 8y. Another mistake that students sometimes make is 
they have more than one symbol in between the terms. Like they might have like a minus and a minus or a minus and a plus. You only want one symbol in between and uh, that's important. So you want to kind of write it as simply as possible. Okay, last example. See if you can do this one on your own. If I was doing this now, we have a trinomial. See, three terms. They're separated by the plus or minus. So three groups. We're taking the negative 3x, distributing to x squared, which gives us negative 3x cubed. Remember, I'm adding the exponents if I have the same base and I'm multiplying. So 1 plus 2 gives us 3. Then we're taking negative 3x times negative 2x. So negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. x times x is x squared. Again, remember we're adding those exponents. 1 plus 1 is 2. And then negative 3x times positive 4 is negative 12x. So a negative times a positive is a negative. We can write that as a minus sign. And you got it. So that's the final result. Now, if you want more practice talking about the distributive property or combining like terms, I'll put uh, an example right there, another video that you can check out. Follow me over to that video and we'll get some more practice. I'll see you there.